Now, News for Sports with Sports Director Steve Savai. Hey, listen, I've got a lot of items in tonight's sportscast. There's only one real story in these parts. Albert Pujols does it again with the bases loaded, with the Cardinals in trouble late in the game. I'll tell you all about it next in sports. Friday figures to be a long day at the U.S. Open. Weather permitting, about half the field will try to play 36 holes. Any more rain this weekend could force a Monday finish at the Open. Umbrellas everywhere you looked at Beth Page Black. Only half the field teed off. No one played more than 11 holes. 46-year-old nationwide tour player Jeff Brejo and a four golfer sharing the lead at one under par. He's through 11. Also at one under, Johan Edfors, Andrew Parr, and Ryan Spears. Tiger Woods rolled in one birdie putt in his range shortened day. Tiger has won over par through six holes, two shots off the lead. And the U.S. not close to being ready for next summer's World Cup. Today, a lopsided loss, another one. Brazil hammering them in South Africa. That's Rabinho giving Brazil a 2-0 halftime. I, halftime. What, was I, I, what was that? I don't know. They put it away with a butte in the second half. This was total domination. 3-0 the final. The U.S. now 0-2 in Confederations Cup play. I'm not sure what the sucking of the thumb signifies, but look at it this way. There's a generation of Brazilians that watch NFL football that can't figure out what Terrell Owens is doing after a touchdown either. Good boy. So we're even. Right. Floyd Landis is the American cyclist who was stripped of his 2006 Tour de France victory for elevated testosterone levels. He spent most of the last four years aggressively denying any wrongdoing and challenging the validity of the test. Now he's admitting he did cheat. Man, did he cheat, and says virtually everyone else in the sport has as well. All right, Rams Park organized team activities open with A.J. Feely at quarterback with the first unit. Sam Bradford happy to take a back seat for now, but it won't be long, folks, and it shouldn't be. No one gets better by watching. you got to play and experience the ups and downs. I I'm do. guessing, though, as a 10-year-old, I would have been freaked out if my little league coach showed up in a game in a dress because, quite frankly, my coaches never had the legs for it, and I didn't have the stomach for it. This guy coaches Little League in Lafayette, Louisiana. Oh, no. Dan Colleen oh, says he's donned the dress because a promise is a promise. And we only had one win on the year. So I told him, I said, if, if you win the game Monday, I'll coach the next game in a dress. And I'd forgotten about it. And we were one out away. And I said, guys, focus. Let's get that one out. And they said, yeah, so we can see you in a dress. And I went, uh-oh. I forgot. <laughs> the bad news is they've won two games in a row since he donned the dress and he's superstitious. So parents be uniform. are ready for more of that. Uniform. Back in the early 70s, mini skirts were in. That's why I would have been freaked out. That's why I would have been freaked right. out. Some Jeff Fisher and the Titans may be 0-6, and he's under fire. He hasn't lost his sense of humor. Speaking at a luncheon Tuesday, he stripped down to a Peyton Manning jersey. Here's what he was thinking. I, uh, I just want to feel like a winner, so... Uh... <laughs> Not everybody in Nashville's laughing. I think it's funny, especially given his fantastic track record of being a winner. Mm -hmm. Don't lose your sense of humor. No, it no. is a game. Uh, what's not funny is Peyton Manning will play here on Sunday. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. not very funny. <laughs> Steve Spagnolo outlining the start of the Rams training camp today. Rookies and selected veterans report on July 29th. The rest of the team a day later. The first full squad practice will take place July 31st. And Spagnolo indicates his first camp as a head coach will not be for the meek or timid or faint of heart. The first five days are definitely a bear. The way it is laid out, the times the practice is going to be, the length of the practices. Uh, we heard Steve Spagnuolo's plan for training camp, and I'll, I'll quote, <laughs> it's going to be a, quote, bear the first five days. <laughs> oh, my You're heart, a my guy heart. that went through three oh. Dick Vermeil training yes. camps. This is the take it or leave it. A nasty Vermeil-like training camp is exactly what the St. Louis Rams need for 2009. Take it. Now here are the best reasons for LaRusse's return. He's comfortable here. He's not a guy that moves around much. He's only had three jobs since the early 80s. And he's got three all-stars and great players in place. Adam Wainwright and Chris Carpenter. And of course the most complete hitter in the game in Albert Pujols who's about to win his third MVP award. If we've learned anything, you never know with Tony LaRusse, but most who know him best Expect him to come back in Cardinal Red in 2010. That doesn't guarantee anything, but sure. The NBA champion Lakers celebrating with their fans in L.A. That parade cost about two million, which was paid for by the Lakers and some well-to-do Lakers fans. But tonight, sad to report, my attempts to reach Lakers Uber fan Jack Nicholson were unsuccessful. No, really? I was stopped in my tracks when I found out that he's not listed. 
And, uh, <laughs> I did get a hold of a Jay Nicholson. I think it's Jenny Nicholson, and she's got nothing to do with the Lakers or Jack Nicholson. Good effort, though, Steve. I'm I know Craig Cheatham when it comes to <laughs> investigative reporting, and I admit that. Kurt Warner is leaving the game, and he's going out on top, retiring at a time when he's playing some of the best football of his 12-year career. Warner exits as a two-time league MVP, a Super Bowl MVP, and only the second quarterback in history to throw for 100 touchdowns. Well, Vicki, Mark McGuire announced his retirement from baseball by fact, so today's admission of steroid use through a statement released by the Cardinals should not come as a total surprise. McGuire admits using steroids as far back as the 1989-90 offseason as a member of the Oakland A's, and then at various times through the decade of the 90s, including his record-setting season of 1998 as a member of the Cardinals. In his statement, McGuire says he thought using steroids could help him come back from the many injuries he suffered. Here is a portion of the statement released this afternoon. Now that I have become the hitting coach for the St. Louis Cardinals, I have the chance to do something I wish I was able to do five years ago. I never knew when, but I always knew this day would come. It's time for me to talk about the past and to confirm what people have suspected. I used steroids during my playing career, and I apologize. I wish I had never touched steroids. It was foolish, and it was a mistake. I truly apologize. Looking back, I wish I had never played during the steroid era. The entire McGuire statement can be read online at KMOV.com. Cardinals manager Tony La Russa has been Mark McGuire's staunchest defender throughout this controversy. Speaking this afternoon on the Major League Baseball Network, La Russa says he only learned of McGuire's steroid use for the first time this morning. I do not feel duped because he never duped me. Uh, you know, he never asked me to defend him. I spoke with Cardinals GM John Mazalak about 45 minutes ago. He told me there's a chance McGuire could be in town for this weekend's annual winter warm-up. I'll have Mo's reaction and comments coming up at 6 o'clock. You know Cardinal fans have strong feelings on today's news. For more on that, we bring in Matt Sesney live in Creve Coeur. McGuire continues to downplay the connection between his use of performance-enhancing drugs and his performance, telling me this afternoon he believes his numbers are legitimate, even if there is skepticism out there. He does acknowledge the ancillary benefits steroids provided. Is it fair to say at the very least, though, you did gain perhaps an unfair advantage in being able to come back from injury and to be able to perform through injury and maybe some added stamina and boost throughout a regular season? Well, that's, it, it gave me, it, the, it gave me, I mean, during that 93, 94, 95, and 96 season, I was a match unit. But that stuff, yeah, it, it got me back in the game. It got me back playing. It gave me more ABs. It, it allowed me to play more games. So, yeah. In that way, it did, yes. Many fans want to blame the new hitting coach, Mark McGuire, but is it really Mark's fault? Tonight, News 4 Sports Director Steve Savard talks with one of the local media's top baseball analysts, St. Louis Post-Dispatch columnist and one-on-one ESPN radio host Bernie Miklas about the team's hitting problems. Holiday strikes out. Right now, as we sit here today, it would be the lowest scoring team LaRousse has had in his 15 seasons in St. Louis which is pretty dramatic. That wasn't the expectation when Matt Holliday signed the most lucrative contract in team history. The Cardinals were expected to light up the scoreboard and dominate the Central Division. That could still happen, but the somewhat sluggish start to the season understandably has the controversial hire of McGuire in the spotlight. Mark McGuire was going to have, a, in my opinion, a lot of people just waiting in the kind of in the bushes to, you know, see, see, we told you, he doesn't know what he's doing. Miklas says the principles and approach McGuire is taking are sound, but he admits the first-year coach still has plenty to prove. He's got to show that he can lead 12 or 13 players, and they're going to adhere to his message, and they're going to believe in what he says. And I think that part's still a work in progress. If and when the Cardinals begin to live up to their offensive expectations, Miklas cautions against giving McGuire too much credit, just as he scoffs at the notion that the former slugger is the reason the Cardinals aren't tearing the cover off the ball now. Do we really think Matt Holliday and Albert Pujols, their success or failure is going to depend on a hitting coach? I mean, come on, let's be adults here. That's just absolutely asinine. I mean, these guys know what they're doing with the bat. They don't need coaches. Bernie also points out that the Cardinals' defense has been unusually porous in the first 40 games or so, and that's been a factor as well. Bottom line here, Bernie and I and most believe the Cardinals will win the Central Division and make the postseason. That's when the real judgment of McGuire will likely be made. Remember, the Cardinals struggled to score runs in last year's playoff flop, and that was a factor in the dismissal of Hal McRae. McGuire should be held to the same scrutiny come October.